might be a vessel to honor sanctified and meet or suitable for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. So we're trying to present you perfect in Christ Jesus. Uh, we're accountable to one another, because the Bible says that we are members one of another in the body of Christ, but more so to Jesus. Because when he comes back, it's Jesus that will judge us. It is Jesus that we will stand before and have to give an account for the deeds done in our body. <clears throat> so when we look in the scripture then, when God created Adam in his image and in his likeness, it was God's original purpose and intent that man would be like his creator. We know that man fell from right standing with God when he disobeyed the voice of God in the garden. And what happens now is what salvation does is that salvation implements God's original intention for man and makes it a present day reality. Adam, when he sinned, he was tarnished. And the image that he had was lost. It's not a physical image that Adam lost, but it was an eternal image. The image that was lost, it was not external primarily, but it was an eternal image. His DNA was messed up, it was born in Adam's image, and it wasn't born in God's image. When we get to salvation under the new covenant, God now re-implements uh, his original purpose and plan, which was that God would reproduce his DNA in man, and man would reproduce that same DNA and populate the nations. And so Adam messed up in that aspect, but when we come to the new covenant now, the Bible says, Beloved, now I am sons of God. Son, yeah. And so there was Jesus, the only begotten son. DNA, now there are many sons of God, yeah. which was God's original intention. Yes. Right there. Now, each and every one of us has been born into this world, was born with Adam's image, Adam's DNA, Adam's chromosome. You turn to 1 Corinthians 15 and 49, the Bible says that we have borne the image of the earthy. We shall also bear the image of the heavenly. The earthy image is the sin nature which we inherit from Adam. The heavenly image is the divine nature which we inherit from Jesus Christ. So when you are born again, you have a new genetic code. Hence the scripture declares, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things have been passed away and all things have become new. There is a new principle now that is at work in your life, a new DNA structure. And that is the DNA of God. The Bible says, as many as received him, to them gave him power that they might become the sons of God, who were not born of man nor the will of the flesh, but they were born of God. Praise God. Now, there is a new code, genetic code that is in us. And this code, the same as all DNA, it governs our function and our life. If you could, the reason why you 
not trying to impress man, he's trying to impress Jesus. Amen. And so all of us need to try and press towards that mark. The reason why we have apostles for the perfecting of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, until we become a perfect man. That perfect man is likened unto a pastor or a bishop. It's likened unto Jesus himself. He says, until we come unto the measure and the stature and the fullness of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so the Holy Spirit now is... The, uh, the vehicle, so to speak, that is used to help us to be conformed to that image. If we step back to Romans 8.29, it says, Who God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son. Then he goes on and he explains how this happens. He says, For who God uh, did foreknow, then he also called. Who he did predestinate, then he also called. And who we call, then we also justify. And who we justify, then he also glorify. Glorification is a process that is taking place now by the inner working of the Holy Spirit. As we look into the perfect law of liberty, the Bible says that we are being changed into the very same image from glory to glory as by the Spirit of the Lord. So glorification is a process that is taking place now. Praise God. Praise God. So when we look at the Holy Spirit now, the Holy Spirit is more than just tongues. The Holy Spirit is more than just gifts. The Holy Spirit is more than just uh, how you feel. Sometimes you can feel His presence. But really, that's for our benefit. But the Holy Spirit was also given for God's benefit. Uh, I don't believe that someone can genuinely receive the Holy Spirit and still be the same. If you've received the real McCoy, if you've received the real thing, it is impossible for you to remain the same. I say genuinely because the devil is the original counterfeit. And if the truth be told, we have all kind of folk that come to church. Uh, they all look like saints, they dress like saints, they talk like saints, but not everyone that comes to church is saints. When service is done, we hug everyone and we greet one another and we say praise the Lord. But if the truth be told, we don't always know who we are greeting. And although we might not know, God knows. And this is the reason why I say the Holy Spirit is also for God's benefit. Because in 2 Timothy 2 and 19, it says, and having this seal, God knoweth those who are his. Now, it says, the foundation of God stand is sure. Having this seal, this seal, the seal, I believe, Apostle Paul is referring to is the seal of the Holy Spirit. If you turn quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter number 1, 2 Corinthians chapter number 1 and verse 22, it reads, who has 
validating you. It is God authenticating you when you receive 